Habitiere. I've been skiing a lot of slalom these past few days with my students and something I wanted to point out today is how to punch or block away gates and combinations. But first, congrats to Wendy Holdener, Kathy Liensberger and of course Michaela Schifrin for some crazy good runs. All right, let's now look at combinations. What exactly are combinations? Um, there are two very common ones, which are called the hairpin and the flush. Uh, and there's an uncommon one too, which is essentially a longer flush. And once again, I ran out of vocabulary, so please let me know how to call that in English. Thanks a lot, guys. All right, now that we've established these uh, three kinds of combinations, let's also mention the undergate or banana. One thing those combinations have in common, and that is excluding uh, the undergate or the banana, is that you should always exit them with your outside hand blocking the gates away, as you can see in all those examples. All right, now let's talk about the hairpin specifically. A hairpin is entered in two ways, either with the inside hand or the outside hand blocking the gate. Personally, I used the inside hand to enter hairpins when I was younger and weighed about 40 kilos. But when you grow older and when you stop having trouble blocking gates, it is just very common to enter the hairpin with the outside hand. And of course, the exit is also done with the outside hand. Um, now onto the flush. Entering the flush is only done with the outside hand. The second sort of double gate uh, leaves some room for interpretation. And what I mean by that is... Most people like to just block away the gates, others ski past them without blocking the gates. Um, personally, I use the first variant more often, but I think going with whatever makes you feel more comfortable is good here. And of course, the exit is done with the outside hand. Now to the elongated flush or whatever it's called. Um, the entrance, at least for me, should be done with the outside hand. Then the next double gates, the next two double gates, are leaving some room for interpretation, as we saw in the simple flush. Uh, so some skiers block the second gate with the inside hand, then block the next gate with the other hand, and continue exiting with that hand. Um, most World Cup skiers, however, don't really block the two gates in the middle and just block the last gate, of course, with the outside hand. Okay, now on to the under gate. Um, there are also a couple of ways to ski an undergate, but generally you can try to block whatever gate comes in your way. And if they don't, then that is not really a problem. The undergate they set today, for example, was very interesting as some skiers didn't even touch the second gate. Or barely touch the second gate, rather. Uh, if this is set differently, you'd need to adapt. Okay, so if the first gate, for example, is set in basically in the fall line of the of the second gate then maybe it would be good not to block the first one and only to block the second one and sometimes it's best to block both gates if you are still watching then you're totally awesome and you're getting some cool stuff for it uh, the channel has just recently hit 1000 subscribers and as a small thank you gesture i created an instagram page um, where we'll post from time to time uh, so if you'd like you can uh, check it out and get a better feel for who we are and what we're doing. And I will definitely answer messages. So if you don't, you know, if you have any questions, uh, let me know either by commenting here on YouTube or we can also chat on Instagram, whatever floats your boat. Thanks a lot for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Ciao, ciao.